Hey everyone, welcome back to Go Local Live. I'm Ava Gaudette, and up next, right here in the Navigate Credit Union Broadcast Center, I have the co-director of Providence Poetry Slam, and she's also the director of their youth program called Prov Slam Youth, and I'm very excited to talk to Muggs Fogarty. Muggs, come on out. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for being here today. It's a pleasure. So, Providence Poetry Slam, uh, Super cool organization, been around for 25 years. 25 years. Here we in Providence. We celebrated uh, the 25th year this past September. It's incredible, and obviously you're way too young to have been involved the entire time. Tell us about how you <laughs> got involved and became co-director and what your experience was with the organization. Right. Um, so I'm 26 now, full disclosure. <laughs> um, so I've been kind of in and out of the organization the past 12 years. Uh, I started just attending the, the youth poetry slams and open mics when I was a freshman in high school. Just kind of uh, saw posters for it and had friends that were frequenting. Uh, and I actually had a friend just sign my name up. And I oh my gosh. Yeah, I was very shy. <laughs> no pressure. Right? <laughs> I just had a, a big notebook full of poems and was very shy. Um, but I got up and read and I was probably like, blah, 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 and then I ran off stage. Um, but even from that, just the community is so welcoming and so loving and so supportive of young people, especially. Yeah. Um, so I was totally hooked, and I ended up uh, having a lot of amazing experiences um, in the community there. Traveled three times as a competitor in Brave New Voices. When yeah, I was a representing Providence in the competition, yeah, which is really it's an cool. International poetry yeah. festival for for youth writers that happens every summer. Um, I've attended it three more times as an adult, coaching my own team of young people. Um, not just me, there's like a whole group of volunteers. Uh, but yeah, I, I kind of went off to college and when I came home, there was sort of some need in the volunteer mm -hmm. staff and I just hopped right back in. And yeah, I think in 2014, I uh, was kind of voted in by my peers to be a uh, co-director. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool that you were a young person that came through the organization and it is so now special. you have yeah exactly you have a really um, close connection to why it's important and why it needs to Definitely. be you know maintained and, and look uh, yeah yes um, exactly I know personally I probably wouldn't have pursued uh, the arts I probably wouldn't have pursued higher education in a lot <laughs> of respects um, definitely was very you know confidence building and so to have that experience and to come back and organize on that front uh, is really special. Um, there's two other co-directors working with me. There's Charlotte Abazzi, who is also an alum of the program, which is amazing. Um, and there's Vadik Kumba, who is an incredible local MC and playwright and poet, um, who also does his own work with youth at AS220 in the theater department there. Uh, and we're just kind of like, you know, a dream team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People <laughs> totally. who like, love Providence and love poetry and put in a lot of good work. Yeah, I want to talk a little bit about the emphasis uh, toward uh, your youth program because you really do have a focus. I mean, I feel like Providence Poetry Slam could just be like a place for adult writers and performers sure. to kind of do their thing, but, but really the focus is the the younger people, 19 and under, a lot of these events are geared toward. Why do you think it's so important that they have this outlet? Ooh, I, mean, <laughs> I know, it's sort of a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, you know, like I said it a minute ago, it's one of uh, the most kind of confidence building experiences a young person can have. Uh, not so much writing poetry, but being able to have a public speaking experience that's that's uncensored and that's uh, creative and a lot of times political and it's mm. just kind of one of the few spaces uh, teenagers especially can have where they can just have full expression um, and not be sort of policed by adults around them but rather right. you know encouraged uh, to be who they are and to figure out who they are in a safe place a safe way um, yeah yeah and in, in a creative <laughs> way too because then you build writing skills, public speaking skills, you collaborate with other people around you, adults and people your age. So just you just kind of fill out as a person. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of a weird way of saying no, it. No, very much so. I, yeah, I think that it's not only, you know, um, allowing them their own voice in this kind of realm, but 
to participate in these slams and, and actually force themselves to get up there, <laughs> right. read what they've written in front of other people, watch other people's performances. It grows them in so many ways, I'm sure. And when you just came from class where you have to ask to go to the bathroom, right. um, it can you know, be, be really empowering just to like have your, your time on stage to just let out whatever you need to let out and be yeah. where you want to be. And I'm, I'm sure that's something, do you find that the, the young people that are coming through these workshops, do they have an easy time? You know, just in, letting in themselves life? like be, um, be free with exposing themselves in, in poetry? Or mm -hmm. are they, do you find that there's any kind of, um, you know, need uh, yeah. to break through some walls? Because it's very like exposing to yeah. read your poetry in front of it's other people. Incredibly vulnerable position yeah. to put yourself in. Um, I would say like no matter what kind of personality, uh, you always have some kind of internal challenge to do that. So even if you're a more extroverted, even exhibitionist person, there's always something that's going to be difficult for you to do. Yeah. Um, for some poets, it's like being funny or lighthearted. Mm -hmm. um, for some, it's taking up any space at all, you know, there, yeah, which yeah. was my issue when I was a teenager. I was like just so <laughs> shrunken and small all the time. Um, so it's like, yeah, every every kind of personality type, even someone who's like versed in theater or something, yeah. so it does attract a lot of that. Um, you know, then it's like, then it's gonna be the challenge of the actual writing mm -hmm. versus like the vulnerability of performance. So there's always, always some kind of angle for growth. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty much no matter who you get. <laughs> so talk to us a little bit the, about the actual program and the workshops that you offer. I know you have right. a you have bi-weekly. Um, bi I'm sorry, bi-monthly. <laughs> uh, first and third Thursday of the month. Perfect. Yep. Uh, the poetry slams that you have at AS220. Yes, which is an all ages space, um, which which makes it really easy for to make it you know accommodating for young people. Right. Um, the slam is always first in the evening. Uh, so, you know, if you have curfew, you have to catch a bus, <laughs> you have time to get there and hang out. Um, all shows are $5 and only $1 if you're 19 or under. It's also oh, cool. free for Brown and RISD students if you bring your student ID, um, which was like a new thing this year, which is pretty exciting. Uh, and before every Prof Slam show at AS220, there is a free writing workshop for youth, which is at New Urban Arts, which is on Westminster Street. Um, New Urban Arts, or NUA, is a youth after-school open art studio space. Um, but they let us use their nice little classroom twice a month, and someone from Prov Slam staff, uh, a coach or a mentor in the youth program, will be there to have prompts or to look at your poetry or whatever the vibe is that day. Um, and you can just come in, and it's free. And then we'll walk down to the slam with you, and it's really fun. That's, that's really how cool. we walk on Yeah, down. that's how you Just walk. Blah, blah, blah. I'm mm -hmm. gonna read some poetry. <laughs> um, yeah. So, coming up in January, you yes. have a really big event, and we have a little bit of a jump on this right now. But talk to us a little bit about the event and uh, how we're. Time of year. Yeah, it's a it's a really cool thing. So tell us about it. So um, there's a, a handful of kind of national or international poetry slam tournaments that we send representatives to from Providence. Uh, and anybody can come and sign up for a slam and compete for these slots. One of the festivals we send a rep to is called Women of the World Poetry Slam. Um, and that's just pretty much open to any femme, feminine identified artist. Um, I've represented myself. I had such an amazing experience at this festival. It was just uh, the caliber of work. Everything is so amazing. Um, I believe it's in Dallas, Texas this year. I might be wrong, it all gets scrambled. Yeah. But we'll be having a show at AS220 on January 4th, uh, probably around 8 p.m. And uh, pretty much any femme poet that has slammed at Prof Slam in the last year is eligible to be in this competition to then, if you win, represent us at WAUPS in probably Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you'll need four poems of varying lengths. Um, there'll be more information with the particularities of that on our Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, which is Providence Poetry Slam. It's a group on Facebook. That's where we post all of our events. And we always open up the show with a, a really beautifully curated 
um, showcase of local artists. And so in the past we've had, oh God, just, I'm kind of, I don't know, just, just, <laughs> just the cream of the crop of, of women and, and queer folks in the community who are just doing incredible art. Um, you know, we've had like DJs or projectionists or musicians, like violinists, like it's just an amazing, amazing night of, of art and community. And it's always one of our so biggest, cool. most energetic shows of yeah. the year. It's kind of legendary. Amazing. And now yeah. now is actually the time <laughs> to spread the word about this. Right? Because the holidays come. Yeah, and you need a little. Nobody knows who they are anymore. Right, <laughs> right. Like January 4th, new year, new me, come to Alps. Right. Yeah. So if you're out there, teenager interested in poetry you can you can get the jump on it now start taking some workshops and you know prime yourself to maybe yes. compete and and teachers high school teachers um, sending your students to the slam is an incredible extracurricular activity or like extra credit um, <laughs> we've had teachers do it before and it always has like a really meaningful impact on their students especially if they have to write about their experiences and what they heard so it can make for a great assignment if you want to give that to your students. <laughs> totally. How do you reach out to the community to get people involved? If they don't seek it out themselves, if they're not somebody who is already thinking this is something I'm interested in and may want to do, how do you convince a teenager, like, poetry is cool, you should try this? <laughs> it's, you know, it's a struggle. Yeah. But usually once they see it, um, their impression of what poetry can be like and sound like mm. will radically shift because right. um, they're reading what like Robert Frost or something yeah, yeah. in high school um, old white men yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. it isn't always the most uh, accessible or interesting for them and so you know when they see themselves reflected in these performances or they just see poetry being you know performed with, mm -hmm. with love and vigor they're like oh oh, okay, so this is like kind of like writing a monologue for a movie, mm -hmm. or this is kind of like hip-hop, or this is kind of like music, or this is, you know? Right. Um, and they start to make the connections and kind of forget their old associations with like poetry as like a monolithic, yeah. you know, bleh. So uh, a lot of times, you know, exposure through YouTube, you know, yeah. we, we film some of our bigger shows and try to kind of disseminate the videos into the world. Um, there's a couple amazing sites online. Um, there's Button Poetry, which is a really amazing uh, kind of archive of live performances of poetry. Um, there's Slam Find, which has visited Providence uh, Poetry Slam a bunch of times to film us. Um, yeah, so like the internet is kind of yeah, the biggest kind of helping, kind of helping. <laughs> like you know, tactful flyering, right, um, right. You know, calling schools up and just letting them know. Obviously, our partners at ASD20 and NUA do a lot of footwork for us. And just word of mouth and nice nice things like this. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but it is a struggle because teens are very set in, in their, their ways. ways. <laughs> they be but I do stubborn. feel like that's what slam poetry sort of did, you know, back 25 years ago when, when this Definitely. started as a thing. It's like, it's not just words on paper. This is hip-hop. It's, it's performance. It's you know, you can embody. It's alive. Yeah. It's like a living, breathing art form. Um, so yeah, people still kind of roll their eyes or they're like, oh, you like poetry? Yeah. <laughs> like, no, 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 I'm cooler yeah, than no, you. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> the I'm other question late. I had for, um, when you do gear something like this toward a younger audience and younger participation, right. and there are sensitive subjects being talked about, described, yes. words being said, experiences being explained. How do you keep it a safe environment right. for the participants? Well, I always say um, safer yeah. because there really is no such thing as, as a safe And place you don't know what is going space. to affect one right. person and not it's the other. It's actually impossible yeah. um, to really know how every single thing is going to affect every person in the room. Um, so at the beginning of each of our shows, there's kind of like a spiel that we read, and it lists our values as a community, which is at its core just like about mutual support. Mm. Um, we always stress that if you do feel uncomfortable or you need to take space from the show, that you can like leave the room, like step out, and that people on staff are always you know down to talk to you about right. anything um, or help mediate anything for you if like you don't want to talk to somebody. Um, so just kind of having set, you know, best practices of how to 
just be community, like, in a space. Mm -hmm. um, and we want it to be warm and welcoming and invite everybody back all the time. So, yeah. So, you know, hosting a show can have its complexities. And you are usually the host. I'm often the so. host. Yeah, me and <laughs> it Charlotte. sort of falls on your shoulders a little. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. But it's a labor of love. Um, but, yeah, just, like, creating space to, to listen to feedback yeah. and, to, and to support people that are, like, physically in the room right. as best as possible. Um, and, yeah, there's no censorship and there's no, you know, yeah. a AS220's whole byline is unjuried, uncensored. Right. Um, and also that all shows be all ages, so that's, like, deeply in our, our praxis as well. Uh, but everyone gets to say their piece, but not without some accountability there. Yeah, you know? right. So, and especially young people, sometimes they express concerning things, and so you want to yeah. check in, yeah. but they still get to say what they want to say. So I think that's a good thing, ultimately. I think so, too. Yeah. And I think if you're out there and you are considering this, no harm in showing up. Yeah, $1 yeah, for watch. 19 and under. Or maybe uh, your friend will sign your name on. And yeah, like they did and <laughs> push you on the stage. <laughs> Read that poem. Going to greatness. All right. right. <laughs> Providence Poetry Slam. Check them out. Mugs, thank you so much for being here. Thank it was you lovely too. speaking with you. And uh, that wraps up my hour today. Uh, be sure to tune in at 4 o'clock for Kate Nagel with News and Politics. And uh, thank you again for thank being here too. today. Thanks for checking me out. I'll see you next time. 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 Time.